So we are on episode 10 of Big Brother 26. This episode had the potential to be great. Coming out of it, I would say that it was good with a great final three minutes. Where I feel like throughout the episode, they just left out so much stuff. But I feel like we'll see more of it next episode. But let's start from the beginning. So the beginning, we see start off with the aftermath of the nomination ceremony. So Cedric nominated Tucker, who pretty much volunteered to be a pawn again. Kenny, who just always wants to go home, so he's a safe nominee. And Angela, aka The Target. First notable thing we really see on this episode is Gwen venting to a lot of people that he really wants Angela out. He need, he says that even in his DR that his game is pretty much on a pause until Angela leaves because Angela knows about his power. But I guess he just forgot that he told Kimo or maybe he just trusts Kimo so much still that Kimo, I guess, doesn't matter that he knows his knows about his power. So he's going around the house telling a lot of people, we got to get Angela out, got to get Angela out, got to get Angela out. And I felt like he was being a little bit obvious that he had something against her to where he wanted to, well, they did get in a fight, so I guess he could use that as an excuse, but it was just, he was pushing heavy to get Angela out. Then we go to a scene where Tucker's talking to Kimo. Tucker's talking about how he really wants to get the powers out, and Kimo tells Tucker that, he confirms to Tucker that Quinn has another power. He tells Tucker what the power actually does. And to be honest, I don't even remember Quinn telling Kimo, if I'm 100% honest. But I know that he did tell Kimo and he told Angela. But I remember the specific scene when he told Angela. I don't remember when he told Kimo. Did we see that on the show? And I just, I'm just forgetting it? Or was that never seen on the show? Tucker is obviously really happy to hear about this information because now he knows not only who has the power, but what the power actually does. Then we see Kimo saying his DR would... Everyone already knew he has a huge crush on Tucker. He loves Tucker. That's why he's telling him all this stuff. He wishes Tucker was not straight because he really wants Tucker. That's why he's spewing information to Tucker, even if it's about one of his allies. Because Kimo is inside of a really good alliance with Quinn, Quinn and Tcor. And Kimo was really the one that confirmed this because Angela did tell Tucker that Quinn had the power, but Tucker didn't really believe Angela. He did believe Quint Kimo. These names, I'm sorry guys. Next we see a scene with T Core and Kenny and it just this was a kind of this was a good running joke throughout the episode where Kenny was just like he wants to leave or he wants to stay. Now it was a good running joke throughout the episode, but it was also annoying because this is what we've been dealing with as live feed watchers or live feed update watchers for the past what has it been three weeks. Kenny wants to leave. Kenny wants to stay. And it's just annoying. And t -Core was very annoyed in her DR and in person. She was just saying that I don't get Kenny. Like, she doesn't get it. Like, I think in person she was like, I get it. I get it. Then her DR, she was like, I do not get Kenny. It was funny. I love t -Core. She's really climbing the ranks of being one of my favorites at the moment. Now we go to the veto selections. And, of course, we have Cedric playing as the HOH. And the three nominees, Tucker, Angela, and Kenny. And then the first name they pull out, I believe, was Mackenzie. That could have been wrong. I'm going to get the order wrong, but it was Mackenzie and Liam. Those are the extra players. We get this scene where Kenny's talking to Cedric, and he's talking about how he wants to win the veto. He's going for the veto. He wants to win it, and he wants to take Angela down. And he's telling this to Cedric. And Cedric's just the nicest person. He's so super nice. Probably the nicest male in the house because he's just like letting Kenny say this and he's thinking in his head, uh, no, I don't want to name another nominee. Every single week someone named a nominee. Like, he didn't want to, he wanted to keep blood off his hands, but Kenny wants to win it and take Angela down. We go to the actual veto and this was a pretty cool competition. It, I, I did not write down the name of it, but I think it was called Recharge Core, Recharge My Core, something like that. And they had this big, this like, I guess it's a core. I don't know, but this big weird thing that they had to make through a course to plug it into a power cord. And there was vines hanging that you could not touch. If you touched the vine, the the core would lose some of its power percentage. It would go down by 5 or 10 or something like that. And there was also bamboo hanging down, but you could hit the bamboo. But you could not hit the... I mean, you could hit the vines but you would lose power and you want to plug it in in the quickest amount of time with the highest battery percentage. The first person we see go was Cedric and his his was probably the one we saw the most of his actual way getting through. He ended up plugging it in with less than half 
percentage left, like less than 50. I didn't write the actual number down. I actually missed it. Next person we saw was Mackenzie, and she plugged hers in with 65% battery. Then we saw Leah, who also had less than half. Then we saw Angela, who finished with less than a quarter. Then we saw Kenny and Tucker, but they kind of just kept going back and forth between those two, so it was really hard to like keep up with, but they both seemed to be doing pretty well. In the end, they show who the top three were in no particular order. It was Mackenzie, Kenny, and Tucker, and then they gave away the winners, which was Mackenzie, would of course, well, I'm sorry, the order, which was of course Mackenzie in third place was 65% because we actually saw our percentage. And in second place was Kenny. We didn't get to see his percentage. But then we saw Tucker won with 85% battery. So he's the new veto winner. He, he now holds the power of veto. I didn't really get this scene afterwards because Cedric was acting so shocked that Tucker won. And now I have to name a replacement nominee. He just seemed so shocked. And I was like, Tucker, why are you surprised that Tucker won the veto? You put him on the block like there was such a chance that he would win and you like whenever you nominate people you should always immediately start thinking about who your replacement will be in my opinion just my opinion but he just such a nice person and he was not thinking about that and then he starts scrambling to find who he thinks should be the replacement and uh he did talk to Mackenzie. he was trying to convince her and she was just like letting him talk and in her dr she was like there's absolutely no way that i will go on the block and not use my power there's specul speculation uh, with live feed watchers that they thought like oh my gosh she's actually considering going on the block and not using her power but in her DR she confirmed that she always was going to use it that would be stupid to go on the block and not use her power she told everybody about it because she didn't think that anyone would put her up but it kind of backfired because now they put her up and now she has to use it on herself but that's what she got the power for in the first place was to save herself so good on her Tucker's trying to convince Cedric to put Mackenzie up to flush out her power and he says everyone knows about it so why not just flush it out right now then we see Tucker tell Cam about Quinn's power and Cam ends up telling Cedric about it Cedric once again being the nicest human being in this house said he feels betrayed by Quinn and now he wants to go around and talk to Quinn and try to get Quinn to admit it to him just so it won't seem like he lied or anything like that but he talked to Quinn a lot and Quinn just never admitted it. He just he, and at one point Cedric realized like okay he's not gonna he's not gonna tell me. But then like this is where I feel like they didn't show enough. Like they showed a lot of that and just so much happened this in these past couple of days since like Sunday that I feel like they showed some stuff on here that was not really relevant. Like they showed uh, Cedric trying to get that information out of Quinn for way too long. Like, I, it was so much more stuff that happened. I don't know if I want to, like, say it on here, but I don't know. Like, I, I just feel like they should have shown some more important stuff. But then we see on this episode a scene in the HOH room with Cam, Cedric, Tucker, and Kenny. And Tucker's leading this conversation. He's pretty much the star of this episode. Tucker has really become the star of this whole season. He gets the most screen time of anyone else. And it, I don't even think it's close. He gets the most. This episode, actually, because Tucker, Cedric, and I would say uh, Chelsea have been the stars. They've got the most TV time. But this episode, Chelsea, I don't even think she got a DR. I, I don't think so. But she was really quiet this episode. This was not her episode. Uh, by the way, Rubina, still no DRs. Now, I'm not going to lie. I missed this meeting. So, Tucker, I always was wondering, why did Tucker have to take Angela down? Why didn't he just take himself down and expect Cedric to nominate Quinn? But now he actually made a little bit more sense. And it made me realize that's why he took Angela down. But he's also friends with Kenny. So how come he didn't take Kenny down? I don't know. But what? Because, yeah. Because if Quinn uses the veto or runs the AI, then it's Tucker and Kenny up. Whatever. Tucker is really, he, he's really confident in himself with the AI arena, as we saw in this episode. Tucker wants to take Angela down because he doesn't want Quinn to go up with Angela and Kenny because he feels like Quinn will easily win AI arena with those two up on the block. But if he's in AI arena with Quinn, he feels like he can beat Quinn and keep Quinn on the block. So his, that was his plan that he wanted Cedric to do. He wanted to use Tucker wanted to use the veto on Angela. Take Angela down. He wanted Cedric to put up Quinn. And he wanted Quinn, Kenny, and Tucker to be in AI Arena. Tucker's super confident that he can win it. Then he wants Quinn and Kenny on the block. And he wants the house to vote out Quinn. 
that was his move. Uh, Cedric was, he wasn't even 100%. Like, he never said, okay, let's do it. Nothing like that. But I guess Tucker just ran with it. And there's another thing. Like, they didn't show so much. So much. Because after this scene, we go right to the veto. And I just wrote down, we missed a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. We missed so much stuff here. Because this just went from that to that. Like, I, I'm assuming next episode is going to show all this. I hope next episode shows all this. My episode review for next week is probably going to be so long. So, so long. But this is where the episode actually gets good. So Tucker does use the veto on Angela. It shocks everyone. So many people's jaws were on the ground. Angela almost had a panic attack because she was not expecting it. She starts crying. She's like, I did not expect that at all. This is history in Big Brother because not a lot of people use the veto on someone else. It would be crazy if he went home. If he went home, this would go down as one of the dumbest moves in Big Brother history. But if he stays, then, you know, it's not. But then Cedric blindsides everyone. Well, not really everyone, but he blindsides Tucker, and he nominates Mackenzie. And immediately, Tucker starts pretty much going off on, C on Cedric. Like, it was intense, and Cedric was saying stuff back. It was an intense. At that point, they are no longer allies. They're no longer friends. They're enemies. And uh, Tucker was just saying, like, yeah, I can't wait to be up here with you, and I'm going to beat you, and I'm taking you out. Like, he was talking. He was mouthing off for real. And Cedric wasn't making down, though, but Cedric is just so sweet and so nice. Like, yeah, I felt bad for him personally, uh, especially because he never said, okay, let's do it. Even though we missed a lot, he never said that on the, on the feeds. He never said, okay, that's the plan. Let's do it. He never said that. We missed so we missed why he didn't do it to Quinn. We missed when he told Quinn that he was that Tucker was doing this. Like we missed so much because yes, yeah, Cedric told Quinn, "Hey, Tucker wants this to happen." Like he 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 for he we missed a lot. So Mackenzie's up and Tucker's talking to her like whispering over like this was not the plan. I didn't want this to happen. Tucker's also an idiot because when he used the veto on Angela, he said gotta get the gamers out or gotta get the competition out or something like that. And I'm like, uh, you're talking about yourself. <laughs> like, you're a competitor, bro. Like, I said gotta get the competitors out or something like that. And it's like Tucker, you are a competitor. You're saying that as yourself. You look like one that they need to get out, and you're still on the block with Kenny. I don't know. I guess all of them have won a competition, though, literally. Kenny, Tucker, and Angela. And it's funny because they won all three competitions. One of them won HOH, one of them won Vito, one of them won AI Arena. So that's kind of actually cool. So they uh, were about to say the Vito media is, meeting is adjourned, but then Mackenzie stands up because of, I guess Mackenzie was a little blindsided, too, because she went up. And she uses America's Vito. She pulls it out. I, I saw, like, the actual Vito. It was, it was, like, red, white, and blue. It looked pretty cool to me. And she used it, and then Angsley pops up, and uh, more people's jaws were on the ground. Like, oh, my God. And uh, <laughs> freaking Angela was going crazy. Like, this is effing Big Brother. This is Big Brother. Because, like, it was cool. It was a, this is a moment. This will go down as one of the craziest Vito ceremonies of all time, in my opinion, this was good. This was a good final, like, three minutes. It was a good veto ceremony. Ainsley says that she's taking, her, that McKinley's taking herself off the block, and now America will vote. And people were like, because some people didn't know that part. They're like, oh, my gosh. So there is a chance that Quinn could still go up. Cedric said, like, oh, man, like, my clean, sweet, clean HOH is getting real dirty real fast. And it did, and I feel really bad for him. And Tucker was saying, like, oh. But my thing is, Tucker, this was your plan, not his. If he didn't want to do it, he didn't have to. He's the head of the household. But Tucker was just like, you should have done it. You should have done it, kid. You should have done it, uh, uh, playboy. Like, he was just attacking. Or not attacking, but just, like, he's mad. He's pissed off at uh, poor Cedric. And I'll consider to continue to call him poor Cedric because he's so sweet and so nice. Mackenzie said, oh, Cedric, you just blindsided Tucker. You blindsided me. You've made two enemies because now Tucker's coming after you and I'm coming after you. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, this poor boy. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. Uh, but Cedric definitely just put a target on his back, unfortunately. And Kenny's just there. He's just sitting there. We don't find out who gets voted on until the live eviction episode, but it's looking like it's going to be Quinn. Even when they had the little person talking at the end saying, oh, you guys will vote someone in, the screen was on Quinn. I thought that was so funny. Uh, I won't be surprised if Leah gets voted in too, though, to be honest. Like, the people that wouldn't surprise me is if it was Leah, if it was Quinn, and to be honest, for some reason... I think Chelsea, because Chelsea is Cedric's number one ally. So I feel like America might vote Chelsea in. So Chelsea would be someone that I would say I would 
definitely say Quinn because of the edit and everything. Or Chemo, because Chemo is the reason why all this is happening. So I could see Chemo getting voted in too. So those would be my four uh, guesses would be Chemo, Chelsea, Quinn, and Leah. I feel like one of those four will be voted in by America. But I don't think they're going to go home. I, I, I really think that... I, I feel like Kenny's going to go ahead. I feel like Tucker could leave too, because now he's blown up so much. Epi tomorrow's episode better be crazy, because like I said, this episode was just missing so much. I think this episode... Oh, man. I, I feel like it's... This episode could have been great. It could have been great, but it was okay. That's it for this video, though. This That's it for this video, though, guys. I will catch y'all in the next episode. Be sure to leave this one a like, comment, subscribe, and I will catch y'all later.